If you're looking for a true echo trip in Florida, you won't be disappointed in the nature-rich coastal panhandle. Let's start with the Gulf Islands National Seashore. In Florida, the National Seashore stretches from Escambia through Okaloosa and Santa Rosa counties. It's one of the prettiest beach settings in Florida. The sand is blindingly white. The dunes are graceful and rolling, and the Gulf of Mexico is the deepest turquoise water you'll ever see. This is the largest national seashore in the United States. You'll find all kinds of seabirds here, too. This pelican seems right at home. Be sure to visit the zoo, Northwest Florida. This attraction will bring out the kids and all of us. There are over 1,200 critters here, from lions to Sarah, a security blanket wrapped around her like a mantle. Don't miss Gabby the giraffe, who stared down as if to say, feed me, and especially Raja the tiger. He posed like he truly wanted his picture taken. Their safari line limited train winds through more than 30 acres of free roaming wildlife, allowing a glimpse of what life would be like in the wild for these creatures. Viewing from the train, you're not hampered by boys between you and the animals. They're comfortable in the niches, and you're seeing more natural behavior. Gorilla and Chimp Islands are located here. All the animals in the preserve coexist, as they might do on the African savanna. Fortunately for the wildebeest, deer, zebra, and other grazing animals, there are no predators in this preserve. They must feel like they're in heaven. Florida's largest state park, Blackwater River State Park, is located in Santa Rosa County. I was impressed before I even reached the park entrance. There's a beautiful wooded picnic area with a boat launch right up the Deaton Bridge Road. The river had a hard sandy bottom and was tanning colored. I drove into the main section of the park and passed an impressive wooding boardwalk. The sandy swimming beach at the river it was lined with tall cedars and cypress trees. I can understand why this is such a favorite of kayakers and canoers. This is one of the purest blackwater rivers in the nation. Florida's Gulf area drew me like a magnet. It's that combination of showmanship and natural that makes it special. It's so open and airy you feel you're right on the beach. I enjoyed the penguins feeding and talk. The manta rays swim in such clear water you get a wonderful view. My favorite was the dolphin shell. They had three dolphins performing. Dolphins and trainers both seemed to be enjoying themselves. Fred Gann and Rocky Bayou State Park is one of the most meticulously maintained parks I've ever camped in. It has paved roads and even some paved sites. The Rocky Bayou Trail and Sand Pine Trail to the rear of the campground are a great place to spot wildlife, both land and aquatic. There's a stretch of scenic highway running through most of Walton County. It was here on County Road 30A, also known as Emerald Coast Parkway, that I viewed one of nature's rarest ecosystems, coastal dune lakes. These unique lakes are formed by wind and sand, creating a lake enclosed by dunes close to the Gulf Coast. The lakes are filled with fresh rainwater and salt gulf water. Occasionally, the lakes burst through and dump into the Gulf, allowing more salt water to fill its banks. These systems are only found in five places in the world. The Gulf Coast of Florida, especially Walton County, is the only place in Florida you can view this rare phenomenon. Great Beach State Park has Wesson Lake, a fairly large dune lake that has a boat ramp for canoes or kayakers. You can fish in the lake, too. Swimming is only allowed on the Gulf. This park has one of the most beautiful beaches in the area. Gulf World Marine Park is a true ecological learning experience, as well as a fun attraction. The park is laid out well with a tropical garden and lots of water features and little bridges over them. The exhibits showcase penguins, otters, flamingos, alligators, iguanas, reptiles, and tortoises, as well as the expected stingray, shore, and sea turtle exhibits. The star attractions are the dolphins and seals. The dolphin show is spectacular. The California sea lion show is something special, too. The show I attended featured Otto, a 13-year-old sea lion. His trainer was Lulu. The interaction was fantastic. Zoo World Zoological and Botanical Park is small, but then so are diamonds. Their motto is, where fun is never endangered, and they live up to it well. The plants mingle with the zoo residents. 
I particularly love their big cat section. The Sumatrian tigers are two males named Haramu and Tega. The lioness looks so peaceful she made me want to take a cat nap. Camp Helen State Park is a hidden gem. It's an undervisited park offering natural and cultural resources. The two features intertwine here. It's precisely because the park is surrounded on three sides by water, the Gulf of Mexico, Lake Powell, and Phillips Inlet, that the cultural assets came to be here. Lake Powell is one of Florida's largest coastal dune lakes. A beautiful old home, Loch Lomond, was built by Robert E. Hicks for his wife and still graces the park. The state bought the site in 1999 to avoid it becoming just one more cookie-cutter condominium development that already desecrates so much of Florida's shoreline. Many of buildings of the earlier era have been preserved and can be viewed via a walking tour of the property. If you love undeveloped areas, sugar beaches, picturesque dunes, golf and bay views, and lots of wildlife, try St. Joseph Peninsula State Park. This park takes you far away from the hustle and bustle to 10 miles of white sand beach where you can swim on an uncrowded gulf beach or kayak past the coastal hammock and calm bay water. The tip of the peninsula is a preserve where no vehicles are allowed. There's wonderful hiking there. Cape St. Glass Lighthouse sits on a windswept stretch of beach and was preceded by three other ill-fated beacons before the existing one was built. The beach here is rugged and raw, great for birding. St. George Island State Park is another great lighthouse. There are entire undeveloped beaches so relaxed. You can access both the bay and the gulf here also. The St. George Island State Park has lots of driftwood in the most interesting shapes and colors. Shelling is great, and so is wildlife watching. Another lighthouse worth visiting is the Crooked River Lighthouse near Caraville. A really fun town to visit, too. Some great places to eat while you travel. Caraville Junction is perfect for breakfast or a light lunch or snack. To sample some of the unique seafood caught in Apalachicola Bay, stop at Tiki Hut and order a bulldozer. It's a small lobster not sold commercially, so this might be your only chance to enjoy one. Then if you're there at night, Harry's Bar is perfect for a cold one or a snack. Just across the bay, Dog Island is one of the peaceful barrier islands in the Gulf. There's no bridge to this island. There's just one lodging there, the Pelican Inn, and no crowds, bridges, or traffic. Just beach and more beach. Edward Ball Wakulla Springs State Park is another spot where history and nature blend, providing a special charm. The lodge built in 1937 by Edward Ball, transports you to a more peaceful era. Wakulla Springs is the only Florida State Park with a lodge, and it's a real beauty. A trip on one of the park's tour boats, either the glass bottom or the river tour boat, transports you to a world of wildlife. I was lucky enough to have Ranger Luke as a guide on my river boat tour. He seemed to know exactly where to find all the alligators, from large dragon size to tiny hatchlings, lots of turtles, and the most beautiful birds. I was snapping pictures so fast I didn't know where to point my camera next. There was so much to capture. A rare yellow-crowned night heron, eagles, ibises, wood ducks, moorhens, anhingas, tricolored herons, great blue and little blue herons, snowy egrets, so much that I couldn't photograph them all. You have to visit the St. Mark's Lighthouse. Then if you turn off Highway 98 on Old Plank Road, just before you cross the St. Mark's River Bridge, you'll discover a hidden treasure. Sulphur Springs, once a booming resort with a hotel and cabins. The strong smelling waters of this little spring still make the spring a popular place for local residents. There's a great little cracker restaurant on Highway 98 called Ootsie's 2, just west of the St. Mark's River Bridge. We're Kathleen and Martin Walls, and if you enjoyed this slideshow, do visit our site for information about our books. Wild About Florida, North Florida has more information about this and many other great North Florida natural attractions. There is also a South Florida edition, 
and a Central Florida will soon be released.